There's something joyous about the combat in chorus. There exists a perfect harmony between gaining speed and changing direction to deliver something that feels exciting to play with. Each moment outside of combat is spent racing towards the next encounter. I'd like to dive into what makes this combat feel so good, from the momentum-based movement to hairpin turns to the very context the movement is placed in. Chorus is a spaceship combat game released in 2021 by Deep Silver and Fish Labs. You play as a fighter pilot called Nara and try to help resistance forces take down an evil planet-killing cult. There are several large open areas to explore for side quests and to progress the main story. This element of exploration is welcome given how tight the controls feel and how nice it is to weave in and out of environmental objects. In combat, you'll switch between three different types of armament to deal with the shields and armor of opponents. And there's a wide variety of enemies which have varying weapons and maneuverability to challenge players, but core to the game is the movement of the ship. With ship combat games, there's a certain amount of predictability when it comes to how your ship moves through space. If you have enemies behind, you'll have a hard time shaking them off and getting your ship to a position where you can fire at them. Between increasing speed, doing a barrel roll, and turning the ship as much as possible, it can still be hard to shake off opponents. This is the case even in ship combat games set in space. Despite the lack of gravity or friction, ships in these games can behave like they're still on a planet. One of the most interesting examples of space combat is actually shown in the Battlestar Galactica TV series from 2004. In that we see the Viper ships have multiple thruster points around the ship to take advantage of the lack of atmosphere in space. Movement like this would admittedly be incredibly complex to implement and to control as a player, but it captures something fundamentally different about movement in this type of space. Chorus understands this and uses it to its advantage. Chorus starts out with the same method of movement that we see in a lot of other ship combat games, but after a couple of hours it gives the player a core movement ability which fundamentally changes the game for the better. Because the game is set in space, any acceleration in a particular direction will have the ship continue moving in that direction indefinitely until the player applies acceleration elsewhere. The camera is locked to the direction the ship is facing, so the player can bank the ship in another direction either through the right analog stick or mouse movement. The result though is similar to other ship combat games, and even driving games. The faster you're going, the larger your turning circle. If you want to be more manoeuvrable, you need to slow down. Slowing down, however, isn't the most fun thing to do in these kinds of games. We want to move fast and turn faster, especially given the context of how you might need to avoid enemy fire. The mechanic the course provides players supports this and more. During one of the early story missions, players acquire their old ship, which has a unique ability. Holding down a specific button will lock the ship into traveling the direction that momentum has been carrying it, and allows players to use the mouse or right analog stick to look in any direction in three axes whilst this is happening. This provides player with two key forms of movement. It allows players to move forward and aim their weapon behind them, it also allows players to turn their ship at a sharp 90 degree angle without sacrificing acceleration. So this type of movement has benefits tactically for the player in a combat situation, but before we get into that I think it's important to examine why it's fun. This movement mechanic in Chorus is essentially the ability to drift the vehicle in three dimensions, and an obvious place to look at that is in race car drifting. With racing being the end goal of games like Need for Speed and Inertial Drift, the mechanic of drifting takes on a specific function towards that goal. Going as fast as possible down straights is a no-brainer, but how the car enters the corner is a core challenge of these games. Applying the brakes as you go through the corner feels slow. Entering the corner at speed whilst the back end of the car swerves round allows the driver to accelerate out of the corner at speed. With drifting you get a feeling of entering the corner at speed and exiting at speed too. Though advances in tyre traction might make drifting less optimal in certain racing contexts, it still has its place as a strategic racing choice and it's a hell of a lot of fun. With race car drifting, there's a balance point to achieve, where too little or too much acceleration can spin the car out, so there's an element of the player pushing their luck and managing their proximity to other cars around the corner. Chorus swaps that race car push your luck element of drifting for precision drifting because the player has combat across three dimensions to focus their attention on. The different goals between racing and combat also fundamentally change the relationship the player has to this mechanic. Instead of going as fast as possible to the finish line, the player in course has swarms of enemies to defeat. 
The path to victory is less about going fast and more about keeping your target on the enemy ships whilst you avoid getting caught in their targets. So with everything directed at that point, this drifting mechanic excels at allowing the player to fluidly move around the battle environment. A great example of this is in making abrupt turns that wouldn't otherwise be possible. One of the difficult problems of these types of shooters is when you have an enemy on your tail and you can't manoeuvre fast enough to shake them. Whilst accelerating and turning may avoid the enemy damaging your ship for a while, it's something that could go on and on given the enemy's capacity to mimic your movements and stay chasing the target. However, the faster you go, the wider your turning circle is, and the easier it will be for your opponent to lock on. What Chorus's drift movement allows you to do is maintain forward momentum whilst finding another direction to immediately accelerate in. This allows for your ship to immediately break the targeting line that enemy ships have with you. With the majority of ships not having the same manoeuvre, this is a significant advantage the player has. It doesn't feel overpowered because there is still skill required in orienting your ship and perspective towards shooting the enemy ships. The other aspect of combat that drifting feels good for is in strafe shooting static targets like turrets or weak points. What this involves is holding the drift button and aiming your ship at the target whilst you continue moving in your original direction. There's a joy in the freedom of floating past your target as you chip away at its health, while still avoiding the target tracking of certain enemies. What adds to the joy of these manoeuvres is that it requires skill on the approach, so that you set up the right line of forward movement whilst you take aim. This is to make sure you've shaken things off your tail, and that your forward momentum won't make you collide with the environment or another ship. Because you can't correct that forward momentum during the attack itself, you have to think further ahead when attempting it. What this form of drifting supports is skill-based play and tactical thought at breakneck speed. In the middle of a fight where the player is having to keep track of enemy ship types, weapon selection and more, they still need to excel at simply moving through the space. In three dimensions, this is no easy task whilst under fire, but Chorus makes this a joy at every turn. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to check out any of my previous videos, you can click on the link in the description. I have more videos coming up, so if you'd like to be notified when they release, then click on the subscribe button.